Hello, everybody. Welcome to the IC Topic Chats. Today is Thursday. What is it? Oh, hey, it's uh, it's April 27th. It's almost May. When did that happen? I say that every week. I, I know you guys are probably tired of hearing that. Today, we're going to talk about what to do when things go wrong. Um, and it will be a, a series of different questions and thoughts uh, uh, and ideas that may be dark, a little bit dark. Um, but I'm trying to make it a little bit lighter by putting in cat memes and GIFs, or is it GIFs? I'm, I'm, I think we're, it, we, it, at one point it was definitely GIFs, then it became GIFs for sure, and now I think it's back to GIFs. You tell me, I'm not really sure. So I'm going to do a little bit of a presentation, and then I'm going to stop the recording, and I'll say goodbye to all the people out there in YouTube land, and, the, and then we will just sit and chat, and then you guys will come up with all the ideas that I, uh, I forgot to bring up because I wasn't putting it together. I am actually really excited about this session today. Um, I was originally gonna do it as a panel and um, I had a panel two weeks ago and I thought, well, I just don't wanna keep asking people to be on a panel. So I'll just put this together. And then it just, it, it's like sometimes you sit down and you, you hit a brick wall and sometimes it just flows. And this one just flowed out of me Monday morning at about 5 a.m. Um, and so here we are today. Let's see if uh, I had any coherent thoughts at 5 a.m. So. I will say the example that I think about just as the way I thought about this is if my child got into a car accident, what would I tell them, right? So if my child got into a car accident, the first thing I'd say is, are you okay? Pull the car out of traffic, check to see if the, the other party's okay. Um, and if you got hit, put, take a picture of their driver's license before they drive away, or, or their license plate, I mean. Um, don't admit guilt, right? Call 911, the police, then call the insurance company, call me <laughs> or your significant other um, to make sure you're okay long term. So that's the first piece. The first uh, is the, what's the immediate response in the long term? Do you have the right kind of insurance for being in a car accident? Were you driving carefully? What were you doing? How did that happen? Could you have anticipated this accident? Um, is there is your car safe? Do you drive in a car that's that's appropriate for you know accidents happen and you need to be you're not driving a little bitty smart car are you are you driving like something that's that sadly can withstand a, uh, an impact? So that's how I think about this. So let's go into some real things. Um, so first idea is my client is pressuring me to start work before the contract is signed. Welcome to consulting. Okay, so. I think in our contracting sessions, Ann and I both established that we oftentimes do work before there is um, there there is a contract in place. I think this happens. You've got to be very careful, though. You don't want to get too far down the road and find out that the contract's not going to be signed and you're never going to be paid. So I guess the first considerations are, is it, re is it reasonable for you to think that you're going to get paid? For me, I often put together... Um, a proposal with a client and they put my name in the proposal and the proposal gets funded. And so there's an expectation from the program officer, not just from my client, that I'm going to be their evaluator. And so they would have to explain to the program officer why I'm not uh, involved. Um, and so I don't worry as much. Um, usually I have an MOU in place, a memorandum of understanding, if anybody wants that Check, check with me and I'll make sure you have a copy of uh, the template that I hand out to people that we've used in previous sessions. Um, and also, you know, don't go too far down though. Don't spend too much time on a, on a project and, and before the contract gets signed, is it gonna be, can you get this done in three months? If you're three months into this and they seem to be dragging their feet to get this together, you might need to stop work. Try to avoid giving any deliverables after three months. Yeah, don't, don't do too much. If, they're, if they don't seem serious about giving you a contract, you need to withhold your seriousness about how what you're going to do for them. Because if you don't have a contract, I imagine they, they won't want to pay you either. So, All right, next one. Okay, I'm sick or injured and I can't do the work. My immediate response to you is reach out to your network of colleagues, perhaps the people in this room or within the IC TIG or other people within other TIGs. Um, don't surprise your client. Um, you know, as one, I say, reach out to other people, reach out to see if they can assist you. Um, can you contract somebody to get some work done that you can't do? 
Um, if it's not possible, make sure you're communicating with your client. We all get sick. These things do happen. Is this long-term or short-term? Um, I guess my next question is, do you have disability insurance? This is the sort of thing that's going to take more than a short period of time. For your long-term planning, you know, make sure you're developing overlap with others. Do you have other team members? Do you have subcontractors that you work with? Do you know other people who do the kind of work that you do? Be aware of these things that you have this opportunity uh, to reach out to people who might have capacity to support you. Um, think about disability insurance and also think about the term I use a lot, which is networking karma, that idea of giving out, giving to others with the expectation that when you have an issue down the road, somebody can step in to help you out. Next one. There's actually two parts to this. The job is the job I promised is taking so much more time than I thought. Okay, if you're new to evaluation or if you're new to independent consulting, this is this is going to happen. Okay, if it hasn't happened, congratulations, you're better than the rest of us because this is what happens to all of us. Um, my question for you is: Are you dealing with an hourly billing or are you dealing with by product? Um, if you're dealing with an hourly billing situation, your immediate response is to, to think about whether your client's prepared to pay those extra hours, okay? If, you're, if you said it's gonna take 10 to 15 hours and you're at 20 hours, is your client gonna pay you for 20 hours or are you gonna have to start eating this time? Um, you don't wanna, again, I'm gonna, you're gonna hear this recurring theme, don't surprise your clients because nobody likes to be surprised. Um, is it their fault, you know? Oftentimes the client is at fault for this taking so much more time because they need to go through an IRB requirement that you didn't expect. They haven't been available. They've been on vacation. You've been working on it, but you've been waiting for approval. Um, but you, you got to try not to surprise them with a big bill because this is going to be a problem down the road. Um, I guess at some point you need to ask yourself, should you be eating some hours? And, and it's not really what we want to do. We want to try and anticipate these things ahead of time but um, you may want to eat hours before you end up, um, meaning you're, you, you don't charge certain hours because you've taken too much time. This is a bad process to get into because you don't want, you don't want, to, be in, you don't want to be eating hours on a regular basis, um, but sometimes you may have to do that. So that's something to consider. Now, if you're doing this with product billing, um, it's a different kind of a perspective because you said, hey, pay me $10,000 for this project. And it's going to take me, 10 days, $1,000 a day. I'm just using that as an example. Um, is it If it's supposed to take 10 days and you're at 12 days, that's probably not that big of a deal. My general rule of thumb is 20%. Uh, if you're within 20% over or under, that's kind of acceptable. Um, everybody's gonna have their own rule of thumb and I'd love to see what other people have to say in the chat or when we get a chance for, for chatting literally. And, um, after I'm done presenting, I'd like to see what other people have to say. Um, because here's the thing, if, if you're taking a little bit more time at the at the early stages of a project, if you're like me and you're, and you're working with people over time and you're repeating processes, what you're doing early on, you're gonna learn to do faster. And then later on, you're still charging that same amount by product, and then you may be gaining gaining time back. So way to think about it. Um, I guess the other things to think about, how big of a problem is this going to be if you are going to be late with your deliverables? That's a whole nother question. Like, are you, if you're not able to get your work done on their schedule, make sure you're communicating that to them. Um, and, you know, be, be prepared to renegotiate your contract. Um, longer term considerations, make sure you're thinking about uh, how long it takes to do things. I guess my big my big reflection for you is, are you tracking your time? Like, are you thinking about how this is going to, uh, to how much time this is gonna take the next time you do this? Because anytime you do something, you should have a sense for how long this took because it'll inform your future process. All right, we all get this. This happens to me all the time. I lose sleep over this. I, I, I hate to admit it. My client is not paying me. And I guess my question for you is why? Are they upset or are they incompetent? We're gonna take upset first. So if your client's not processing payment because they're upset with you over something, whatever it is, they don't like your font style or whatever it is, or they, they think you're not doing a good job, stop emailing them. Call them up, 
get them on a Zoom call, go see them physically in person in real life if you can. You need to get to the bottom of this because this isn't going to get better if you keep pushing back and forth and playing the email or the chat game. You need to get it. You need to get to the bottom of it. Um, long term, learn from this mistake. Did you do something wrong? Did you just not read the room very well? Um, is this client a good fit for you? Oftentimes they're not, and and we all have these situations where our clients are not good fit for good fits for us. Um, and could you? And we had this conversation um, re uh, recently. Is there was there a yellow or red flag that you should have observed? And if you didn't observe it, how are you going to learn about that the next time? So if they're incompetent, totally different situation. Usually I have I have this frequently, particularly with large universities. They just don't know how to pay me. They want to pay me. They have every interest. They have they love my work. They love what we're doing. They just don't know how to get the checkbook to open. And so this is a whole different work, whole different world. Here's what I do. First of all, you know, I try and write this into my contracts. Oh, wait, that's the, let's do short, let's do the uh, immediate response. Immediate response um, is this the first time? Because sometimes the first time I'm getting paid. They just haven't figured out how to make the process work. I haven't figured out their process. It takes time. Maybe the contract just got signed. The contract has to go through this office and that office has to approve this. There needs to be a purchase order issued. Who knows? So here's what I do. After 30 days, um, I send an email reminder. I do that for everybody. After 60 days, I say, hey, you know what? It's been 60 days. It's been two months. Um, we're going to have to stop work in a month. Just giving you the heads up, all right? And then after another month, after three months, we stop work and we don't we don't send any more deliverables. Um, if you're in a situation where you're 60 days and they're not paying you, you definitely don't wanna send a big deliverable through. Second time this happens, totally different situation. Um, if if they're this is becoming a pattern for them, you need to nip this in the bud because they're, this pattern is not gonna go away. So. The second time this happens, stop work after 60 days, two months. Make sure this is a policy that you follow consistently and professionally. Um, third time, you uh, and this I do have the situation with one client where they just can't seem to figure out how to pay me on time. I say, you just need to pay me up front for the year. Um, and then is that if that's a problem, then we just won't do the work. It's not worth it's not worth my time, particularly if this is a small contract we're dealing with. Long term, make sure these approaches are in your contract so they don't have any surprises when you when you bring them up. Um, discuss them, not only put them in the contract, but discuss them because not everybody reads their contracts. Most people probably don't. Remember to remain hyper professional. Okay. If you take this personally, you get mad, you yell at somebody, it's not going to, that's not going to end well. You just need to be super professional. I get mad, but I don't let that I don't let that madness convey to my um, to my clients. Um, try and try and uh, you know hold back the emotions. It does feel personal to you, but it also feels personal to them. Here's the situation: if they're incompetent, it's usually not they don't want to pay you. It's that they um, they just don't understand how to do it, and this may be their first time. I have that a lot of times. Um, oops. Um, I was going to try and stop that thing from playing. <laughs> um, but anyway, if you if you start, you know, stopping things, it could be personal to that client who doesn't understand how to do it, and that could cause more problem down the line. So try and just stay super professional about this. Last thing I would say is get to know those um, accounts payable people wherever you're working. Um, they are frequently really nice. They really know what's going on. Um, send them cookies. Send them a thank you card. They love that. They never get any appreciation and they will take care of you down the road. It'll be worth every nickel you spend on them. Send them coffee cups, all the things. They love that. All right. Lost a key employee or a subcontractor. Um, I guess the first question is, can you do the work? Do you have the time, the capacity, the skill set to do this yourself? Next question. If, you, if you're not, can you find a qualified subcontractor? Is there somebody else on your team that can do this? Um, I guess you also need to ask the question, is this going to be a huge hit to your business financially um, or through organizational skills because you've lost this person that is key? Hypothetically, 
you know, reach out to the IC TIG, see your other TIGs, your network of, of friends and professionals that you work with, find out if there's somebody that can support you. Um, and then obviously you need to find a way to replace it. Um, Long-term planning, develop some overlap of activities, you know, review pay benefits, other employee satisfaction areas. If it's an employee, um, develop, you know, review whatever kind of relationship you have with your subcontractors if it's a subcontractor. Is there something that you could have anticipated here? I mean, I had a staff member who was wonderful, fantastic, loved her. She loved working with us, but she says, I'm going to move to Connecticut and start on my PhD. How can I, how can I stand in the way of that? I couldn't take that personally. She helped me recruit somebody who was equally fantastic and um, it, it's been okay. So she was key um, and she was replaceable. I have several people who I would hate to lose, but it happens. It happens. Um, all right. I lost my important or well-paying client. First of all, maybe this is true for the last one as well. Give yourself some space to be upset because this can, this can be, this can feel, this can feel hard. You know, this can feel really emotional. It's a totally normal to give yourself some space, perhaps this and the last one. Um, think about what this does to your budget. Do you need to do any damage control? Um, do you need to supplement your revenue some way? Do you need to get back to marketing? Are you doing, are you, are you not doing enough marketing? I know a lot of people who just didn't read, didn't read what was going on with their business. They didn't do anything wrong. Their clients loved them, but their clients went through their process. They, they had these long contracts, the contracts ended and they hadn't invested time in, in marketing. And so they found themselves without any work because they hadn't been planning for it. So long-term, what are you doing to, to think about making sure you have projects a year or two years, three years down the road, and also make sure you're not working with too many projects in one bucket, one type of work. Is there revenue stability that you can think about and a diversity of revenue sources? have from different places. So we have work from the Department of Defense. We have work from the National Science Foundation. We have work from the U.S. Department of Education. We have worked from some small local um, nonprofits. Um, and through all of those things, I, I trust if one goes wrong, then we will be able to support it from other places. All right. My client's asking for more work outside of the contract. Okay, so this is scope creep, right? What what are you supposed to do? What most people will tell you is just say no, but that's kind of a joke because nobody ever said that. We all do some level of scope creep. Um, make sure you understand your tolerance and availability for extra unpaid work, okay? So be careful here because you can get taken advantage of, but sometimes it's okay to do a little bit of, allow a little bit of scope creep. Are you passionate about this work? Does it, how is this going to affect your ability to get the other work done that they're expecting? Is this affecting other clients? Should you set up a pro bono contract or an MOU with them um, for these new activities? At what point do you turn back and say, this is extra work. Um, it's not in the contract. Let's just set up an extra contract or add something to the contract for this type of work. But there are also there are times when we want to do a little something because we can see how that's going to develop into a big something down the road. We don't want to get to that point of like saying we need a contract. It's not going to take that much time. So I think there's a level of tolerance. I think that's the word I'm going to use here. Long term planning. Make sure you have a clear contract um, and and you know what's in there and what's not in there so that you have this to refer to. Um, these little one-off activities are what cause a lot of problems for consultants because they end up doing a lot of extra work for free and not getting paid. Um, you may want to kind of think um, some sort of a, have a decision-making process on when you take on additional work and whether it makes sense. But like the uh, Kathleen's um, RFP decision matrix that we had a couple weeks back, create something like that. What's your decision matrix for doing extra work? All right. My client has ghosted me. This is this happens from time to time. I, I'm getting paid, um, which is a, always the irony. I, I'm getting paid to do nothing. And I'm and I continue to say, we need to get this project going. Why is and they just stop referring to me. So my immediate response is you know, do a professional 
regular email follow-up with them. After some time, you might need to start checking around with their colleagues and say, how do I get in contact with this person? Um, and as soon as they respond to you or you can get in contact with them, try and have a meeting with this is kind of like the, the client is, is upset with you conversation have a meeting in real life with them or, or synchronously by video conference call try and avoid the email back and forth um, what's that what's the root of this problem here um, you might be overbearing you might need to be in their space more frequently than they're ready for you and they just don't some people are, don't understand how to deal with conflict and so they just avoid it altogether this definitely happens and i think um, most of us, I think the way we operate is that we want to be your partner. We want to be, we want to work with you, but not all of our clients understand and appreciate evaluators being participants and supporters and team members. They think of them as outsiders who want to come in and criticize. And so they're not always ready for that level of, of involvement. Um, long-term planning, are there, were there any yellow or red flags you should have seen is it you or is this your client? Take a step back and pro probably it's both. Um, all right, last, last big thing that could go wrong is I'm getting sued. And I was like, I wonder how, many, how, many, how am I supposed to respond to this? Um, hold on a second. Could you go down the hall? I'm in a call. Sorry guys, somebody's at the door. I'm getting sued. Anyway, immediate response, manage your emotions, arrange a meeting with a small business lawyer, check your, with your insurance carriers about what kind of coverage, check in to see what kind of, um, check in with your team like us who uh, can help crowdsource some ideas on what you're supposed to do. Definitely reach out to the IC TIG. Um, you know, the other thing, just like when you get in a car accident, don't admit guilt, right? Um, take a step back uh, and try to understand what's going on there. Um, See, Mary, I'm, MJ, I'm glad you asked this question. Has anybody been sued? Um, I've never been sued, but I but I plan for it long term. What kind of insurance do you have? Um, are you are prepared for random accidents that occur while you're doing your job? That'd be general liability. Are you are you prepared for somebody to sue you based upon the product that you put out there? Um, do you are you prepared for data leaks? If somebody if somebody compromises your data and takes it. Are you prepared for what you're going to do there? Um, are you prepared for an auto accident that occurs on the job for you or some, one of your staff members or a, or a subcontractor? Um, make sure you have employee policies around these sorts of things, or at least internal policies for yourself on what you would do. Um, be particularly careful when you're traveling, when you're off-site, because that seems to be when things happen. Um, uh, and with regards to alcohol consumption internally, um, we go away, people are going to drink, that's fine. Um, I don't pay for it. I never pay for alcohol. Um, you, in fact, sometimes I know alcohol is going to be consumed. So I have little, I have little uh, cashback cards that come through the business and I'll hand them off to my staff and I'll be like, here's money to do whatever you need to do while you're on your job that I don't need to know about. Don't drink, but I know they probably will. But let's just say, um, and the other thing is never, um, I don't let anybody carry heavy objects up and down stairs. We don't have an elevator in our building and we're 21 stairs up. Um, so um, I don't let people carry heavy objects up and down stairs because frankly, we're not, that's not what we're hired to do. So nobody should be doing that. All right, five and a half ideas for what to do when things go wrong. First thing, learn from your and your client's mistakes or colleagues' mistakes. Um, know, what's, know what's happened, listen to us today. This is the conversation we're about to have. Um, take something away from all of that. Make sure you have insurance. <laughs> um, get on a friendly first name basis with your accounts pay payable staff. Trust me, this is gonna pay off in the long run, literally and figuratively. Um, they're usually really wonderful people who just found themselves in a job. It seems kind of not like a, it's kind of feels like a dead end job to for some of us. Some of them love it. A lot of them don't, but they're, they certainly like the appreciation and the, and the time and the effort. Develop a good contract template that considers all of these scenarios. Communicate with your clients. Finally, try to avoid becoming somebody else's things go wrong scenario. All right, next week is Star Wars Day. 
May the fourth be with you. We're going to do something that is uh, Yoda inspired. Do or do not. There is no try. I have no idea what I'm going to put together for this. It should be fine. Um, we're going to do a core topic in two weeks on business structures. And then, can you believe it? It will be three years since we started these things three weeks from now. And um, then you can see the rest. Sarah Sarah Lang is here today. So she's going to, you can see she's got a, a book review in a couple of weeks um, on May 25th. And we're we're actually full through the end of, I think nearly through the end of July, which is crazy. All right. Um, goodbye, everybody from YouTube land. Everybody else stick around and we'll have a chat.